Injury wise, nothing really changed from last night. I think um, Jalen Duncan likely missed missed the missed the missed the week for sure. Um, I'd put him probably in, a, in that week to week category, but I don't see him being available this week. Um, everybody else, again, you're dealing with the normal bumps and bruises and issues. But um, so we'll see on a couple of guys what it looks like by the time we get to Wednesday. But nothing as of right now that seems you know imminent. Got a chance to get uh, Tajay back potentially. So. We'll see. We'll see how the days play out, but nothing right now would rule anybody out for the week, and uh, we'll just sort of see how it comes from from now until Wednesday. What's the so you soreness to for talk? DeAndre Hopkins? He said he had, was dealing with some soreness. and Yeah, he had some lower leg soreness, calf, fish, Achilles area, just some soreness in his in his lower leg. I don't know exactly where it was for him, but it was something in his in his lower leg. Is that usually enough to take work? a guy out? Uh, sometimes it is. Yeah, it depends on what they feel, um, and, and that's usually how it works. So felt a little soreness and tightness and, and held and got held. I mean, obviously the you know game was a few scores down at that point too, so uh, that's sort of how it goes. Um, we'll see how again, we'll see how he comes out of it. I guess generally tell it the trainer that, and then that word gets related to you. Is that, is that what happened in that situation? Usually, yeah, I mean, in that situation, it was the very end of the game, and there wasn't – it was what the last – drive or two um I had heard that he was getting worked on on the sideline and, and that's all I really at that point it's all I had heard I didn't know if it was enough to keep him out or not at that point I was just focused on trying to move the ball down the field and if he was good he's going if he wasn't he wasn't so uh, uh, Nicholas Pate for air Watson competition or is there potentially somebody else you could factor in there um yeah I mean we can factor you know we've, we got John Joku on the roster too so um we're gonna let those guys go and we're gonna find you know something better than what we've had so far. And it just, it, at the end of the day, uh, got to find some sort of solution to it. Um, and, and guys will get opportunities to do so. And, you know, Leroy will get an opportunity potentially to fight for it. Um, um, so we got guys in a roster that got to fight. And then if there's somewhere else we got to go outside of it, we go outside of it. And, um, you know, that's the unfortunate part uh, about where we're at there. And, and we need to find a, a solution at some point. At this point where you're shuffling here. through so many different options at right tackle, is, is there any thought to, like, Shuffling further, where Raidens or you know anything like that? No, not right now. Um, honestly, there's not. You know, I thought Dylan's actually done a nice job playing guard for us, and, and is really um, starting to solidify being a, a solid player for us. And I uh, would hate to move a guy off of that spot that's playing well, and, and that, that'd be a disservice to him. Now, obviously, if you have an injury and you have to do it, that's a different story. But um, certainly liked the the his growth so far. You talk, you talk so much about being more efficient on first down, staying under the chains. Just what are the keys to actually doing that? And is there a way to limit penalties, or is that just individual mental stuff? For um, yeah, we're, we're trying everything we can to eliminate the penalty part. That's, you know, the false starts have killed us. Um, you know, really, uh, you know, two of the first earned first downs uh, in the game when we're, when we're actually we're playing pretty well, we get an earned first down, and then we fumble the snap on a, on a first and 10 and turn the ball over. And then we... Um, Earn first down and try to take a you know it's man coverage play action play the Mason's getting ready to draw on Ridley and um, we give up a sack fumble and turns it into second and twenty eight or whatever it was um, so we we had some spots where first down we were starting to kind of pick up some rhythm and going and, and we had some issues and then you know we jump off sides um, the silent count that's a tough place to play in the noise and, and that was one of the things we had to handle and we didn't do a good enough job um, you do have some issues occasionally when you know you're you're like Chig jumped off sides on, on a first and 10, um, you know, where he's off the ball in, a, in an alignment that's uh, – he can't see the ball, so he's off it. Um, and he's sort of keying the outside defender for the movement to move. And then the, the nickel flinches across the line of scrimmage and he flinches because that's what he's looking at in his movement. So um, those are the challenges of playing on the road, and, and we didn't do a good enough job of, of handling it. But, um, you know, we had some good plays early in the game on first and 10. I don't think we were super efficient on early downs. We were okay. Uh, I think we were right around 40% maybe in the first half. But it just wasn't um, – it's the negative plays that, that, have, that have hit us at times and put us off, off the uh, second half for sure. Uh, the penalties, the, the false starts, the negative run or two that we had. Just it's really hard to get going um, when you're second and 15, you know. Sideline has been in terms of sideline energy, particularly <coughs> yeah. in the second half of games, and maintaining positivity through adversity in those second halves. That's certainly something we need to we need to keep getting better at. Um, I think our sideline's been good. Our guys are focused. They're playing. They play hard. We've gotten into some spots. 
uh, where something bad has happened, you know, where we've lost a lead in the fourth quarter. Uh, we haven't, you know, we, we put our defense in a tough spot or we give up an explosive play on defense and, and it just sort of starts to spiral and we have to find our way out of that. Um, have to do a better job of eliminating those plays when they happen. Um, and then, and then having the mentality of, you know, when something goes bad, we got we got to bow up and whatever phase it is, it's does, it's all three phases that have had, um, those problems and, Almost, you got to take the challenge of, all right, our, our team needs us in this spot. We got to, we got to bow up, and we got to do a better job of doing that. And that's how you win and lose games in the fourth quarter. I mean, all these games around the league come down to a possession or two, and, and we've been in a few of them this year. Obviously, this one wasn't it, but those those moments in the game where you have to tighten down all of the things that are happening and, and really rally. Um, you know, we got to find a better way. Better, you had to do a better job of doing that. Sorry, you talked about the organization's stance on will and just taking the, the mm -hmm. patient approach. Yes. Did you and Rand have an understanding with Amy before the season that you guys were going to stick with him through through thick and thin this year? And uh, what does that understanding look like now when you talk to her at this point in the season? Yeah, it's the same. You know, everything about what we were hoping to get out of the season was a really solid um, and concrete evaluation of, of will as a, as a starting quarterback. Um, you know, the injury process, you know, we haven't played well enough anywhere around him. Um, he certainly hasn't played up to what I think he's capable of playing. Um, and so we're not in a great spot record wise and the injury doesn't, doesn't help. And hopefully that he's the, the minute he's back healthy, the intent is for him to continue to play. And hopefully that's, that's sooner rather than later. Cause I, I'd like to continue to have him playing football, um, but I'm not going to let him go out there if he's not where he needs to be to go perform. And so, uh, again, hopefully in, in maybe this week, maybe next week, but sooner than later, you know, he'll be back playing. That she's comfortable with that patience. She's, she's willing to, to trust you all to make that decision when it comes. Everything, everything that she's given, uh, everything that Miss Amy's given to Rand and I is, is trust and support and, and to do the job that we think needs to get done. And um, she's been fantastic. And, and every conversation we've had is uh, we're all on the same page. And that's uh, that's been a really positive thing, I think, all the way around for everybody. We've asked a number of players <coughs> how do you maintain your, your faith and your confidence, your belief. You, you've never been a head coach or, or a play caller, obviously. Mm -hmm. How do you go about doing that? How do you maintain belief and confidence in yourself? Um, yeah, it, it's there's there's moments where, just like every player has too, for me as well. There's moments where um, you got to keep finding it too, um, and you have to trust it. And I trust it. I trust myself. Um, I trust everything I believe in, my experiences I've had. Um, I've been in these situations before. I know what they look like. I know how they feel. Um, found ways to get out of them as well. And so I've got a lot of coaches that have been in these experiences. They know how to get out of them too. And that's part of it is you just you trust the people around you. You trust yourself to, that you've been in these spots and, and have solutions to the potential issues. Um, and you keep working. And there's really no substitute for that. And you have to come back every every week. You got to dust yourself off, pick yourself back up, and get ready for another one. And um, it's been a it's been a challenging first almost half of the year now, um, and we have to find ways to to continue to try to keep improving, uh, with the intent of that we can go try to go win games. And there's there's no shortcuts to it. Um, there's nothing about uh, the process that uh, allows you to to take any time off. You don't get to. Uh, spend too much time regrouping. You gotta get ready to go, and and that's that's how the NFL is, and and that's how I'm, I've always I've always been too. So uh, we just keep just keep hammering away at it. You talk about Will needing needing rest, maybe to get better. How will you know when it's he have to tell you he's pain free, or just have to see something that tells you? Yeah, it's it's going to be a combination of seeing with you know me seeing it, and then him feeling it too. You know, it's 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 both, and. Um, you know, I don't know that he's ever going to be necessarily like pain free the way that the season works, but um, it can also be you can feel pretty good at some point and it just needs rest. And hopefully this, you know, not throwing for a handful of days here uh, is helpful and we'll see what, what it's like Wednesday. And uh, if he needs another week of rest, he needs another week of rest. But the intent is, is to get him back healthy and, and get back rolling with him. Um, today, he talked about the second half struggles mm -hmm. really seem to start when the other team brings pressure and goes off script. Mm -hmm. Is that just an experience issue for your guys up front, or is it something that, that you guys have to adapt to? Yeah, it's all, all of that. You know, there's I wouldn't say necessarily off script is the word, but um, you know, we've we've gotten teams have played us a little bit differently than what we see going in 
because of um, our reliance and, and leaning on the run game. So we get a lot more heavy uh, heavy run pressures, heavy heavier boxes, different coverage structures than some other teams because of um, our sort of run run centric approach and. Uh, tried to keep him off balance quite a bit with with a bunch of the play action yesterday. Some of it was good, some of it we didn't hit on. Um, but you know that's just sort of how it ends up working. Is, is they're they're trying to make take away what we do well, which is our running the football. And they've done a you know they they had every defender down the interline scrimmage quite a bit, and we tried to action off of it and, and take some shots off it. Um, so yeah, there's there's some things that that we have to do better. I think all the way around managing those things. Uh, from a schematic standpoint, and then from from a player standpoint, adjusting to what looks we've been given. You said fourth down, was kind of dealer's choice in terms mm-hmm. of the analytics decision. Yep. When you when you you had a lead, yeah, they hadn't really gotten any rhythm. The downside there of giving them the ball in, in your territory seemed pretty significant. How did you weigh all? The, seems like it's a gut choice if it's dealer's choice in yes. terms of the analytics. Yeah, and that's what it was, and then I I made a decision to go because I was trying to see if we could, you know, coming out of the half, capture some momentum on that first drive, um, try to keep their offense off the field as best we could. Uh, we had done a good job of that in the first half. You know, they didn't have a ton of plays, both because our defense played well and we possessed the ball in offense a bit, and uh, try to let them get going. The other part of it is I did trust the fact that our defense was playing well in both facets, and so uh, to go for it there, uh, you know, they're going kicking into the wind on top of it, uh, which was a tough area, to, tough direction to kick. And so I thought we had a chance to, if we didn't get it, to stop them. And, and we had them at third and whatever it was, third and six or seven, um, right there on about the 30-some yard line. And they were right on the fringe of their field goal as well. So, uh, you know, at, at worst, we gave up the three points trying to be aggressive on it. So that's the mindset. I mean, I know those things, when they don't work, always get second-guessed and, and always get criticized, um, you know, when it doesn't go your way. But I don't have a... I don't have any fault in, in the process of it and, and how I looked at it. Pretty similar play to the play you ran that was for a loss mm-hmm. before. What was the thinking to go back to the same? Uh, two things. I mean, we they we went on the fourth and one. We went uh, or the whatever it was fourth and one and a half or whatever. We went into a goal line package and we got we got heavy and they stayed in their nickel package and and you know we didn't execute the play well um, on top of it, um, but we felt like we had had the advantage there to get a yard and um, and, and it didn't didn't get executed the way that I was hopeful it would and they were two they were two different they're similar style in that the run was a direct run down down the um, middle of the defense but they're two very different mechanisms of getting there so um, yeah I, I didn't I the call at the time felt good it still felt like it if we blocked it right we would have had a chance again um, looking back at it did you guys consider challenging the spot on the Rudolph? Run just before that um, by the time th- those are really tricky um, because you're you know that, that play clock pumps and and there's no there was no real the replay and the time that I made the call um, happens sometimes really late in the process and so I'd already made the call and the replay came back and it was it was muddy and I'll then I'll say this and I know I, I spot challenged uh, last week against Indy in a very similar situation. Um, you very rarely win spot challenges. It's just not over the history of spot challenges. I don't know uh, what the, what the success rate is, but they're low. And the, they spotted them short. Um, whether there would have been enough to overturn it or not, got in late enough to where um, that's sort of a quick decision. And, a, and a, you know, coming off the first drive of the half, throwing a challenge flag on a spot challenge to a third and one that I felt like we should be able to get. Um, just didn't make sense in, in the moment and didn't have enough information to, to do it in that spot. So that's generally why, yeah, it looked like it could have been close, but usually once they spot that thing, um, it's got to be clear as day. And you even then sometimes they're they're hard to overturn once they go with whatever the call in the field is. That said that teams have been bringing a lot of pressure at you guys and that he doesn't feel you guys have practiced for some of those mm-hmm. looks of pressure and practice you know, leading up to games. Um, is there something more that you feel you guys could be doing to be better prepared to face pressure in a game? Sure. I mean, you, you, you don't, you know, some of those things you don't necessarily have uh, a dial in that that's what's going to be the game plan. And sometimes and they show up, you know, those things start to happen. We, we pressure plenty in practice, but um, you're limited in the amount of practice reps you get. And so you try to practice what, you know, the, the, the numbers will bear out, what their fronts are, what their, what their, primary coverage looks are what the core of what they do. So you try to get those looks in and then um, you, you watch as much film and teach off that as best you can. 
Uh, so certainly we'll we'll be in introducing pressure, more pressure looks because it's a copycat league and teams do what works when they see it on tape. So we'll do a better job of, of introducing that stuff. It's, we've done some of it, but obviously, you know, we've got to do more of it. Are you thinking that some of those, the teams bringing more pressure, maybe going away from the looks you've seen on tape is because they've seen how you guys have handled pressure, I guess, and sure. the specific look you guys are getting? It's probably a combination of all that. Yeah. I mean, it's, again, if teams see what has success and, and they they copy it, and, and we're we're aware of all those things, but that's just what that's what the NFL does, and um, we've got to do a better job of, of handling those issues when they've come up. Can you talk us through what happens in the locker room during halftime? We hear so much about halftime adjustments and kind of the mistake yeah. of this. Just just what is happening? Uh, you go through. You end up going through. Like we all kind of get together, offense, defense, special teams. Everybody sort of gets in their pockets, and um, again, you see what you've adjusted to during the series. Uh, what things what things have gone well? What's what's worked well enough? What's the next counter off of it? Um, you know where you're going to head. What are our next uh, six to eight runs that we like? Where are the next six to eight action passes? Do we need to adjust a formation or two? Like uh, just for a concrete example, we ran a, a, a jumbo package play action that we hit Chig on, um, and so we came back and ran the exact same play, but we changed the formation. It wasn't on the initial game plan. But we come into the locker room and we we, I just said I want to run it again. Change was change the formation to this, um, so we can get to the same essentially the same play out of a different look, um, and so that's how that's kind of what happens at halftime. Um, they're usually not like these groundbreaking adjustments that we we make them over the course of the game, um, but that's that's generally the process. And then everybody gets their players and covers things they need to cover, uh, anything that's new or we're gonna we're gonna do differently. Um, but it's it goes really fast. There's not a lot of time. Uh, by the time you get in, talk through it, and talk with the players, you're basically getting up and getting ready to go right back out. So um, it's a fast process. I think we've done a, a, a good job with it, um, but we just haven't had the, the results in the second half. Comparing the first six games of your team here to the first six games of the 2019 Bengals, all mm -hmm. of the efficiency and production metrics are darn near identical. Um, what do you remember about that experience, that start? What do you maybe draw from that? And is yeah. that something that you look at as trusting the process long term? Uh, yeah, the, yes. To answer the last part of the question, yes. There's, but that, and that's sort of what I meant earlier when I was talking through. You know, you, you go through these types of seasons and starts of seasons, and um, you know, year one. I mean, every year one I've been a part of has been hard. Um, year one in Cincinnati was hard. Year one in Oakland with John Gruden was hard. Um, you know, year I was in year two with Josh McDaniels. I went to year one with John Fox. That was hard. Like year one is hard. There's a lot of things that you're trying to work through. There's a lot of things you're trying to get on the same page. You're trying to build your program the way you want it. Um, and there's always going to be difficulty. And <clears throat> having gone through those experiences give you, gives me the, the hope that one, I can handle it. And two, I've seen it before. So I have uh, at least some roadmap to what that might look like and how to get out of it. Um, but there's there's challenges that come in the start of every program, and um, we've not done a good enough job of handling some of those uh, all the way around, and we have to find a way to, to do those better. Um, I, I struggle to compare, you know, years and teams, um, certainly, but um, you know, there's some there's some similarities uh, to the two for sure. Brian, you draw on that because you've been through it before and have the confidence that you can come out of it again. When you have so many new pieces and players from different places who maybe don't have that experience in your locker room now, mm -hmm. how do you keep them on that track when maybe their frustrations start to boil over at one and five or whatever? Sure, and, and you know frustrations are, are are to be expected if we got the the type of guys that we want, um, but you have to keep showing them where where the where the, where the games where we miss, um, and the margins are so thin in the NFL that. Uh, it's it's sometimes two or three plays a game that that changes the entire complexion of what the game looks like, and so you have to keep and and it's and it's little things like the technique, what you're asked to play, your eyes, uh, where your hand placement is, because sometimes those are the difference between um, an explosive play and and a sack, you know, and that's where you have to keep trying to fight through those things. Is that's it's the it's the margins in the NFL, and it's the way that you the way that you go about your job every day, and then in the game of taking all the things that you do and talk about, and then doing it on game day. Um, those are the things that make the the difference, and we got to keep finding ways to make a difference. Are there any adjustments from those year ones that you've been in that you could apply to to this year one in Tennessee? 
Um, sure. There's there's plenty of things, and again, it's you know the people are different, and the and the the rosters are different, and all that. But um, yeah, there's things that that you can lean on and do differently. Um, there's plenty of things I've I've looked at over the last even two weeks that you know how do we how do we get more out of our our process? How do we how do we adapt to what's being presented to us? And so those are all things that I spend a ton of time thinking about, and and we'll, and we'll tweak what we what we think is tweakable, and that can help us. You know, I'm I'm not so rigid in my approach that I'm not open to doing things differently um, if we need to. Um, and right now, obviously, at, at one and five, and where we're at record wise, and where our team is, it, it, you know, we're obviously open to uh, to having to change some things up because uh, it hasn't worked thus far. So uh, we got to find a way to get better production out of everything in the process make those decisions on, on fourth down if it's not like a gut call like this mm -hmm. was what is, is your analytics guy like immediately yeah. in your in your ear on those kind of fourth downs or how does that well the process I, I get the I get the go for a range at the start of the at the start of the new set of downs um, so usually uh, every set of downs once you get you know to a certain point I, I get the, the down and distance so it's sometimes as simple as Rob will just say hey three or less here and so I know going into the series because that affects how you call third down that affects how you you know, it, it changes how the dynamic of the, of the downs go. Um, for example, against Indy, we, we ran that um, we ran the ball in like a third and five, sort of in the fringe field goal range, um, and, and I'd gotten the a two or less were going, and so I ran the ball to see if we could get it because they're in a you know pass coverage defense, and then uh, if we were short, I knew that if we got two or three more yards, we'd be in a go for position. Um, so that's sort of how that process works, and um, sometimes it's. Um, like for example, on the on the fourth down, I think it was what fourth and three, fourth and four, and that first drive down in the red zone. Um, you know, I gotten it before that series, that that set of downs that you know we're in take we're taking points here, and that was that was the that's how the process worked. Um, we would have gone for it had it been uh, maybe one. You know what I mean? So that's usually hey, take points here, one or less is kind of the go, and so that's sort of what I hear uh, in the process. And so those guys are on top of it; they do a good job. Um, our information is is well communicated in that from that regard, um, and that process to me has been has been pretty smooth. So I'm very aware of of every spot where where we're, where we're at with that. Probably the high, the large group of costly veterans that you guys brought in through free agency and mm -hmm. trades, were supposed to be a transformative group for this team. Collectively, the, the impact they've had has not been what most of the fan base I gather would have, would have imagined. What's kind of your take on the contribution they've made or not made to this point? Yeah, I think there's always room for more. You know, I think we are in a position right now where we need more from from everybody, top to bottom, and you know those guys have the ability. They're the type of players that can change outcomes of games, and and that's what we were. Uh, that's what we need right now. Um, that's that's the expectation, you know, when those guys are in those spots, um, is to make the make the tough plays, and that's that's the difference between the teams that that win games, tight games in particular, um, is when they're given opportunities to make plays, and um, they make them. And we have thus far not made uh, enough plays really in all three phases with opportunities to win games. We haven't done it to win the game, and those guys are are a huge part of helping us get to that point. So. Um, they're not alone. It's not solely on them, but we certainly need more from from everybody uh, to make more plays to win games. How's the shoulder feeling? And how, how well is it? Uh, difficult, bit of a challenge to, to get back in, there, for example. Uh, I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, it's something I've dealt with. So, um, I think probably if it wasn't for like the concussion protocol stuff, I probably would have been a lot sooner. Um, that stuff obviously takes time, but. Um, yeah, was was eager to get back once I got the okay from Doc. When you're going through something like this team is going through, what do you need to hear uh, from your coaches to still believe in the message? Uh, it's just it's all about right now, man. We we're in this hole, and it's all about you know battling our way out of this hole. Um, and I think you know just us as a group, it's just about responding to adversity. Um, you know, obviously this season hasn't went the way that we wanted it to go. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we got to battle, um, battle back regardless of whatever situation we're in. You know, it's all about how you respond to it. It's all about how you, you know, take the daily approach regardless of the circumstances. So um, I think that that's the message. Um, I think that's that's as a team, um, coaches, players, you know, that's that's what we believe in. And it's just about doing that every day. What are some of the things you personally lean on in, in times like this? Like everybody seems so frustrated mm -hmm. in that locker room. What do you lean on to keep you going? And do what you have to do. Uh, I think for me, it's just it's just all about um, just having a standard. Um, 
of how you do things because at the end of the day, you know, life life is gonna be life. Um, you know, things are gonna happen in life. Um, but regardless, you know, the storm storms come and you know they, they never can last forever. And I think that's that's kind of the mentality I take to it. Um, you know, I just try to, you know, hone in onto hone in onto like my mentality um and just attacking adversity every day. Um trying to come in with a purpose um and trying to, you know, live up to that standard regardless of, of what the circumstance is. That's what that's kinda like, you know, you know, how I try to live my life because at the end of the day, like I said, you know, things in life happen. Um, but it's all about how you respond to it. We had a number of, of halftime leads yep. slip away, whether it be offense or, or defense. Yep. What in your mind is happening with, from the locker room to, to coming out? Uh, I just think we're not playing well enough in the second half, um, and I think, you know, collectively we need to we need to figure out a way to to be better um, in those situations. Um, and so, you know, for us, it's going to be about figuring that out um, and being able to put together a complete game. Um, you know, I feel like. You know, we 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 play good football in spurts, um, but we need to play f good football for however long it takes to win a game. And so, you know, at this point, it's all about just trying to get one win um, and just trying to go one and zero each week. Um, but you can't look too far ahead. You know, for me, um, you know, I was talking to some of the guys on the team. You know, we we just we just want to focus on just one week at a time and just trying to get a win. Um, you know, this week, and then we'll focus on everything else after that. But you know, right now, we just got to keep our world small. Um, and just, you know, handle our process throughout the week. Um, and then, you know, eventually, you know, be able to go out there and put ourselves in a position to get a win on Sunday. The challenge, though, is this week, uh, the tar you've got to go back on the road, face another group of quarterback yeah. and Jared Goff. Uh, Detroit, they're 5-1, and one, sitting atop the NFC North. How tough is this uh, of a challenge? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a tremendous challenge. You know, they, they've played some really good football this season. Um, and so it's going to be, you know, critical for us to, to hone in on our game plan, um, really lock in onto what we see on tape um, and just go out there um, and play a detailed, complete football game. You know, I think that's what we ultimately are searching for at this point is just to go out there and play a complete football game to be able to put ourselves in a position to get wins. Challenge of a, of a quick change situation for defense, like the one you guys faced after the, the fourth down, You're coming out real quick and all of a sudden the ball's already in your, mm -hmm. in your territory. What's the, what's the biggest challenge for defense in those kinds of games? Uh, I mean, you know, I. Honestly, you know, I really don't look at it as a challenge. I think, you know, for us, the defense that I, I believe we're capable of being, um, we should be able to get a stop in any situation. I mean, you give us a single blade of grass, whether it's an inch, a yard, it don't matter, we're gonna go out there and defend it. And I think, you know, that's been our standard. Um, and so, you know, you know, offense and, and, and coach believed in, you know, what they were gonna do on fourth and one. Um, and I'm, you know, us on defense, we always behind those guys. And so, you know, they, they did what, you know, the decision that they felt was right for the time. And then, you know, obviously it didn't work out. And now it's our job to go out there and get a stop. And so I think for us, um, you know, we just, we just, we didn't get a stop. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we need to be better. Um, but, you know, the mentality of, of, of the defense side of the ball is give us a, a blade of grass and we'll defend it regardless. Was that an example of needing a guy to make a play like in the first half you were in a somewhat similar situation after the fumble and Arden gets the immediate sack and backs him up you get off the field second half you don't get that is, that is that one of those cases where you just need somebody on this defense to make a play here and there uh i think it's just you know guys just honing in on the details i think you know if you look at that series i think you know we had you know you know a couple couple situations where you know the details weren't weren't met um and i think I think when you look at, at the good football that we've played um, so far this season, when, we, when we're clicking on all cylinders and everybody's playing, um, doing their job, and everybody's playing with tremendous detail, then we're, we're a really, really good group. Um, and I just think, you know, in those situations, it was just off a little bit. But, um, you know, I think the plays come from guys doing their job. Um, and so, you know, that's what we harp every day. Um, and, you know, as long as we continue to do that, we're going to continue to, to make plays and continue to be a good defense. I guess as you guys work through some of the ups and downs, uh, you know, right now we're just searching, trying to figure out, you know, you know what we can do different, um, how we can do things better, how we can do, you know, more of things, um, you know, maybe if we can do things different in our process. But at the end of the day, it's like what I just said before: it's about doing our job um, and just trying to go out there and do that on a consistent basis for a whole game, um, because we know when we do that, you know, you know, we get the results that we want to see. Um, and so it's just about, you know, trying to refine that um, and trying to be able to do that more consistently. As a defense, was there any concern for you guys with how things kind of went in that second half? Or do you just kind of wipe that going into the next game? 
Uh, I mean, it's definitely concerning when, obviously, for one, you lose, and then for two, um, you know, you you feel like you know, in in part of that half, you know, you didn't you didn't play up to your standard, um, and so um, I think for us, you know, we 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 take take a look at it critically um, and try to figure out ways that we need to be better, um, just to hone in on on the details and be able to you know play great defense for however long it takes. So, Nick, what's going on? Coming out of the half uh, for the offense uh, in, in third and fourth quarters, particularly, what is there? There seems to be some sort of disconnect. Is there any way, any way to see what's going on, or trying to build momentum and carry it into the second half? Well, I mean, you said it. There's, I mean, it's apparent. There's, there's some disconnect going on. Um, you know, it's too bad these games aren't 30 minutes because we'd be, you know, having a way different record than we have right now. Um, I don't know. You know, I just, I think. Uh, it starts with the first series when we get the ball. Um, you know, I think that kind of determines how the half goes. And uh, I think what's demoralizing is when we turn the ball over and we don't convert on that fourth down conversion and then the Bills go ahead and score. Um, you kind of felt the momentum shift happen right there. And then it seemed like it was really hard to get it back. Um, but trust me, like we're all trying to figure out what it is, why we're not playing as well in the second half which, as we are in the first half. Um, that's going to be a huge focus for us moving forward, um, and we're really determined to figure out that so we can turn this thing around. The uh, tight ends were a big part of the offensive success in the first half. Or was that kind of by design with Mason in there? Or how were you guys able to be successful in the past game? Um, you know, I, I think it just speaks of our group and just how we show up each day and how we've shown up throughout this year so far. Um, you know, the coaching staff and this organization sees us as dependable guys, and. Um, you know, we had a couple of games where we didn't get many targets. And one thing I've always preached was that, uh, you know, as long as we keep controlling what we can control and just show up and doing what we're asked to do, like our time's going to come. And uh, sure enough, you know, we did get a little bit of love in the past game. Um, and, you know, it just speaks to how we show up each day and we're going to continue to do that. Um, and that's just how it goes sometimes. Sometimes you can game plan the you know, throughout the week, you may think you get, you know, five, ten catches, and you may not even get a target all game. You know, it just sometimes it turns out that way, and luckily it turned out in our favor. But um, offensively, you know, it's we got to do more. Um, and as a tight end unit, we're going to continue to do what we're doing, um, play consistently, play hard, and, uh, you know, do our part to, to help this thing turn around. Do you think sort of like trying to figure it out means at this point in the season? Like, what are you guys doing? What can be done? this late in the year to try and figure some of these things out? I just think we need to stay connected. Um, you know, I've, I've been on teams in the past where as soon as things go bad, you know, you can kind of feel the energy on the sideline go flat. Um, and as soon as that happens, it's, it's really hard to bring it back up. You know, it's really hard to go out there and, and try to, you know, overcome that adversity. And so I think we just need to do a better job of mentally uh, staying tough through those moments and just staying connected and just believing that, we're going to get this ball back and we're going to go downfield and score and get right back in this game. And we just, I think it takes everybody to believe that. Um, but, you know, it's easier said than done. And we just have to practice that. And I think it's more of a mental thing at this point, to be honest. Signs of that checking out yet? When you say people on the sideline are kind of dipping the energy, are you seeing that at all? Or is that it's not anyone thing? individually. It's just as a unit. You know, it just seems like things are just. You know, it, it's just getting flat. You know, it's it's different from how it is in the first half. You know, in the first half, when we're playing well, things are great, energy's there, and as soon as things slowly start to turn, that's when it, that's when we got to ramp it up. Is all I'm trying to say. Um, you know, that's where we got to really buckle down and, you know, just go to go to war. Um, and so we just got to practice that and be better with that. You know, it's it's not easy. You know, every team goes through it. The good ones are able to go past it, and so that's what it takes. And we just have to practice that, and I'm going to keep preaching that. Is there a difference, I guess, in the teams that have done that well in your career that you've seen? Like, where does that start versus where, I guess, this team is right now that, you know, you guys can get back to a, a sideline that's, that's positive and energetic throughout the whole game? Yeah, from my experience, you know, it's, uh, it takes, like, really great leadership from the players. You know, it can't be on the coaches. It's got to start from the core. It's got to start from the players. And... You know, you gotta have you gotta have multiple guys being involved with that. Um, you know, so that's why the most I always say the most important play is the next play. You know, good or bad, whatever happened in the past doesn't it doesn't matter. Um, 
you know, you just got to move forward. You know, it's a long game. You know, good things are going to happen, bad things are going to happen. And so I, I try to preach that to the whole offense. Um, and, you know, and I just speak from experience because I've, I've been on teams that have done really well with that. I've been on teams that haven't done well with that. And the ones that do well are the ones that, you know, go to the playoffs and have a great season. Um, so I just try to do what I can with my expertise and my experience to try to help out in that area. And I'm going to continue to do that. Um, in offensive leadership when you're talking about that? I mean, I'm not going to single anybody out, but, you know, there's it's it's a collective group. Um, you know, I'd say it's just, like, for me, like, I focus on the tight ends. Um, I start with us. You know, there's a lot of guys in the O-line room that um, – a lot of leadership in that room as well. Um, I'm not going to single anybody out and say who's a leader because um, I think it's – there's a lot of guys that lead in their own ways. Um, but I just think we got to be more vocal about it. That's all. Why not? Shouldn't the main leaders of the offense be obvious? I mean, you don't always have to be. You don't have to be, you know, obvious to be a leader. You know, you can be, lead by example. Um, you can be a vocal guy. It, you know, it just leadership looks different in different ways. And um, some guys are vocal. Some guys rather just, you know, keep their mouth shut and do the work. Um, but either way, you know, we just uh, we just got to enhance that. That's all I'm trying to say. The guys, you know, frustration, that's the word everybody's using to describe their emotions. And, you know, you look at frustration, right? It can lead to negative or it yeah. can lead to positive. What makes you believe that's going to lead to positive for, for you guys? Well, because we got to think positively about it. You know, the moment we get frustrated and we start thinking negative, I mean, by nature, that's what we want to do as humans. We want to think negatively when something bad happens. But something in your mind's got to tell you, you know what? Like, yeah, that happened, but I can't let that bad play turn into a bad series. I can't let that bad series turn into a bad game. I can't let the bad game turn into, turn into a bad season. And so it's like, in your mind, you got to tell yourself, like, hey, this stops here. Like, I got, and that's why I said about earlier about the next play mentality. And that's the most important play. And you just got to break it up by that. That's how I approach this game. Um, and I think once we collectively do that, we'll be a lot better. Like I said, it's easier said than done, but I've, I've practiced this for a while. With, with the second half issues, you know, as, as you make whatever adjustments you make and they make whatever adjustments they make at halftime, are, are you on par there and it's just players not winning at the line of scrimmage in the second half or, or is, is the stuff catching you guys and you're just not able to adapt to it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a combination of things. Um, you know, I think they're definitely making adjustments like we are. Um, I think one thing you guys have seen is that they're bringing a lot of pressure, um, which is hard to run the ball against. Um, and then also when you're not able to pick it up as well, like it's it's hard to, you know, sit back in the pocket and throw the ball to the receivers. And so uh, that's something we've struggled with this year um, is handling the pressure. And that's why teams continue to bring it at us. And, uh, you know, we just got to be more stout in that area. And we got to, you know, that's another area we got to enhance. Um, but. Until we sh can show that we can handle that, um, you know, this is probably how it's going to look, you know. When you say more pressure, you mean bringing more people or just more aggressively trying to get into the backfield? Yeah, like they're, they're bringing guys off the edge, bringing an extra guy. Um, you know, they're, bring, they're, they're giving us looks that are unscouted, um, things that we really haven't seen on film. Um, so when you're not practicing against something throughout the week it's and it shows up differently on game day, it's – you know, unless you're like a very instinctive guy, you know, it's, it's going to catch us off guard. Um, and so that's, that's been kind of tough to handle. It's also, I think you guys are one of the youngest offensive lines in the league. So I guess that would come with experience. Too. Yeah, 100%. You know, and there's, you know, there's a lot of new pieces on this offense, right? You know, a lot of new guys, a lot of year one guys, you know. And so it, it definitely takes time to, to build that chemistry and that, that team um, offensively. And so... Look, you know, it's it's early in the season. You know, I know it's not off to a great start, but we have what it takes. You know, we're a great football team. Um, you know, we have great players in every spot. It's just we got to learn to play more like a team. And that comes with time and that comes with practice. And, um, you know, I, I think I think we also have the belief. I know I do. What gives you confidence in that in that greatness? You, you say you're a great team, but the results aren't matching it. So where is that, where is that confidence coming from right now? I think it's. Uh, I think you have to kind of have it internally. Um, like that's something that I believe in um, for myself and then for the team. You know, and I think you look at it like, okay, we got DeAndre Hopkins, we got Calvin Ridley, we got Tony Pollard. Um, 
you know, defense, defense side of the ball, we got a bunch of balls. It's like, dude, we got guys, you know, like this is a good roster, you know, it's just, like I said earlier, it's a lot of new pieces and we have to learn to play like a team. Um, but man, once we do, I mean, it's going to be, this thing's going to turn around very quickly once it does. What's, what's the buy-in level you feel like and how hard is it to maintain that when the results aren't coming? Yeah, we're all bought in and you're right. It, it is hard, right? When, like I said, by human nature, when things go like this, um, you naturally want to check out. Um, but this is a time where when you hit a valley, you really got to hunker down. You really got to scratch, claw, like whatever it takes. You know, you got to amplify in every area to get yourself individually ready um, for the next week. And um, that's the approach that we got to take moving forward is that whatever we have done, we got to do that at a higher level in every area. You know, it's urgency every week, but you talk about how you have a chance to be a great team. How, how much does it have to happen now before it's going to be too, too late? I mean, like I said, I just worry about the next play. You know, I worry about what I got today in front of me. Um, I just worry about trying to win today. And then when tomorrow comes, I worry about winning tomorrow. Um, I don't like to think too far into the future with that. But, you know, there is some urgency that we need to, you know, turn things around. Um, and it starts with how we show up each day. And so I'm not showing up today thinking, like, oh, we got plenty of time to do this. Or we got plenty of time to you know, make this change. Like I, I show up like, hey, I need, what can I do better today? How can I show up best for my team? Um, and that's just the approach I take. Sorry, you talk about having the guys to be great and the potential to be a great team. Is there a disconnect in what you guys are seeing when you're practicing during the week and you're running these plays and you see the, the vision and then you, you take it to the, the field on Sunday and it's, it's not looking the same as it does on the practice field? I mean, no, like I said, I mean, I think, I don't think there's any disconnect at all because if you look at the first half, I mean, we were very efficient in the first half, really, of every game. Um, and a lot of the looks that we practice against show up in the, in the first half. And then for whatever reason, the second half, they make their adjustments. Um, it kind of catches us off guard a little bit. Um, we play on our heels. And, and then once we lose that momentum, it's, it's, it's just really hard for us to gain that back. Um, and so, like I said, you know, we just got to do a better job of like scratching, clawing and and really having that belief that we're going to get this ball back and turn this thing around as soon as we lose that momentum to gain that back.